all right hello welcome to my youtube channel so in this video we're going to look at uh, the concept of limit involving factoring okay so remember i said in the previous video which you can look at under introduction of limits that there are some limits that when you do a direct substitution you are going to if it's a rational function especially you're going to get zero as your denominator and that will be undefined Okay, and so for some of such limits, you can actually factorize and then be able to still get your value for the limits. Okay, and so that's what we want to see with these examples. Although for some of those kind of uh, limits, factoring will not also work. And that's where another rule which we'll consider later comes into play. Alright, so for this kind of limit, what do we do? Example one here says that we should evaluate the limit of Okay, so already we know that if you put 1 here, you are going to get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So what do we do here? We will try to factorize the denominator. Denominator is always the interest. We'll check, is it possible to factorize this in such a way that it can cancel something from up? Okay, so let's look at that. We know that this denominator is difference of two squares. And by the concept of difference of two squares, this is the same thing as x squared minus 1 squared. And so that's going to give us the limit of 4x minus 1 all over. This now becomes x plus 1 into x minus 1 by difference of two squares. And remember, your x is going to 1. Okay, so at this point now, we can easily cancel out this x minus 1 x minus 1 and that's exactly what is making the denominator to give 0 and immediately that happens we can now substitute because our limit now becomes a limit of 4 all over x plus 1 as s goes to 2 and so sorry as s goes to 1 so if we put our x as 1 now we are going to have 4 all over 1 plus 1 which is equal to 4 divided by 2 and that's equal to 2 so for example 2 we try to factor we have the limit of uh, so you know if you put negative 5 here as your t you will get 0 in the denominator so we look at the numerator we can factorize the numerator because it's also difference of two squares so this is going to give us the limit of if we factorize this we are going to have t plus the square here is 5 squared okay so it's going to be t plus 5 into t minus 5 all over t plus 5 so at this point we can then cancel out uh, this and this will go away so we just have the limit of this so if we now substitute we're going to have minus 5 minus 5 all over and so your answer is uh, minus 10 all right so that's the solution for example 2 okay so let's look at a more complex example now here we have we are to find evaluate this particular limit all right so what do we do whenever you are given uh, the limit a particular limit and there is the presence of a radical it is always good for you to be able to evaluate that to rationalize whatever you have whether the radical is in the denominator or in the numerator, especially when the direct substitution is not giving you a valid answer. Like here, if we put x as 0, the denominator is going to be 0 squared, which is 0. So we will try to now multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. And the conjugate of the numerator is simply square root of x squared plus 4. Just change this negative sign here to positive. You recall we did this under sorts. Okay, so and then also multiply the denominator with the same value. In doing so, you have not changed anything. Okay, so if we do this, we are now going to have that uh, if remember this is what we are multiplying. Okay, we are multiplying this with this. Okay, so if of course this is going to multiply this, we we'll take them one after the other. And so if this multiplies this, you're going to have square root of x squared plus 4 all squared. And when two of them squares, the square root will go away. So you just have only x squared plus 4 left. And then 
this will also multiply this you are going to have 2 root x squared plus 4 and then we are done with that so this minus 2 will now multiply when minus 2 multiplies this you are going to have minus 2 root x squared plus 4 and then uh, finally minus 2 will now multiply this guy here and that is going to give us minus 4 okay so in the denominator now we are going to have x squared x squared multiplying a square root of x squared plus 4 let's still leave this the same way it is okay minus 2 okay so here now you will see something that this actually difference of two squares so this is definitely going to cancel away and so we only have x squared here and then of course if you watch here 4 will cancel negative 4 here of course so we have only um, x squared left all over here we now have x squared into square root of x squared plus 4 and then plus 2 remember this is all over okay so and here you can also see that x squared will cancel x squared so we have only one left here in the numerator one all over the square root of x squared plus 4 then plus 2 okay so at this point remember our limit is still here so if we bring our limit to this point here now so if you put your x as 0 into this particular function now you are now going to have 1 all over x becoming 0 here will give us square root of 4 and that is plus 2 what is the square root of 4 it is 2 and that's going to give us 1 all over 2 plus 2 which is 1 over 4 and that's the solution to that problem and then we will look at the next example the next example here is also going to require factorization all right so to do this what are we given we are given that uh, the limit that we should evaluate this meanwhile our f of x is given as root x so that means that if we substitute here we are going to have the limit of uh, our f of x is now root x that means our f of 3 will now be the root of 3 and that is all over x minus 3 as s goes to 3 now but here you can see that if you substitute x as 3 here the denominator will already be 0 and so we are going to take exactly what we did here that means multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator which is root x plus root 3 and so we multiply the denominator with the same root x plus root 3 okay and so what are we going to have if we do that now that's going to give us um here now if x now remember that this is actually difference of two squares so no need going through the stress we did here difference of two squares means take the square of this minus take the square of the other one so if we take the square of um, root x then minus the square of root 3 and that is all over so in this case here we can then bring them together so that is x minus 3 times root x plus root 3 all right and then if we take this square here what happens so you see that the square will take away the root square will take away the root so what we have left up there is x minus 3 all over x minus 3 into root x plus root 3 and so you can see also here that root x minus 3 can cancel out x minus 3 and so what we have left remember our limit so we bring it down so we now have the limit as s goes to 3 as s goes to 3 of what you have up here is 1 all over root x plus root 3 so at this point if we do a direct substitution we are going to have 1 all over root 3 plus root 3 because if you put your x as 3 here you have root 3 
and root 3 plus root 3 is 1 all over 2 root 3. You can take the conjugate of this or you leave it this way. So that's the solution for example 4. All right, so this last example here says that we should also evaluate this. And to evaluate this, if you watch, you also see that if you put your x as 1 over 3, that's going to give us 1 here because 3 times 1 over 3 is 1. And so 1 minus 1 will give you 0. So you also try to evaluate. So that's going to give us, so from the numerator, I will try to factorize. Now the numerator is also difference of two squares. And let me show you. This is the same thing as 3x all squared. Of course, you know that 1 is the same thing as 1 squared. If you open this bracket now, 3 squared is 9. And x squared will give you this. And that's all over 1 minus 3x as s goes to 1 over 3. And so what do you do now? Now we can now use difference of two squares there. And if we apply that, we are going to now have 1 minus 3x times 1 plus 3x. Okay, so at this point now, all over 1 minus 3x. And immediately this will take away this. So you have only the limit of this. And if you can now do a direct substitution, which if you do, you will have this. And uh, of course, this will take away this. So you have 1 plus 1, and which is equal to what? 2. And that's the solution to this. And this is where we're going to stop for this video. So kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will see you in our next video.